Oh my gosh. Okay. Ah! I've never gotten to do one of these before. I'm so excited. Okay, welcome to my first monthly wrap up. I was feeling very colorful today, apparently. Nothing that I'm wearing is matching. I'm wearing my Emma Chamberlain merch, which fun fact, this is so embarrassing. When this line first came out in like 2020 or something, obviously huge Emma Chamberlain fan, I love her. And she's a cat girl and I'm a cat girl. So she came out with her cat merch. And so I ordered the cat merch in like the like forest screen and I'm like out of breath right now, hold on. Mind your business. I ordered like a beanie, like everything, the whole, the whole thing. And then I just like realized like six months later, I was like, that never came. What happened there? I looked, I never ordered it. There's no confirmation anywhere, nothing. And I literally, I'm not even kidding, I cried. Cause I was like, she's never coming back out with this merch. Like she said it was limited. And then, silly old me, she brought it back out for something. So you best believe I bought it, but she didn't have the green. So I bought it in blue. But anyways, cats are here. They're ready for the November wrap up. I don't have three of the books with me for various reasons. Two of them are in Kindle and one um, went to someone. So this was my best reading month I've ever had in my entire life. Literally the most books. I had nine books, which like may not seem like a lot. It sounds like a small number, but that's a lot for me. And it would have been 10 had I not been filming Iron Flame because I would have finished Iron Flame a while ago. So starting off once upon a broken heart i did whoop, i did say my full feelings for this book before i rated this two star wasn't a huge fan i think if it hadn't been so hyped up i wouldn't have been so let down by it i just wasn't in love and if you haven't seen my full review i go in detail about why i don't like this book in one of my other videos i don't know it just didn't do it for me like Jax was the only part that i liked any scene without him in it didn't love the author i didn't like her writing style she repeated herself a lot like it just felt like it could have been condensed um that being said i will read the full trilogy because i own them already i'll get to them eventually i'm in no hurry because i wasn't obsessed with this one so we'll see next i read the naturals obsessed with the naturals obsessed i rated that one a 4.5 um, for a little like ya book phenomenal i read it in like 24 hours less than 24 hours just flew through it it's big print you know it's ya it's easy to get through not a lot of pages and it's a four book series cannot wait to get to the next books i'm not even kidding the like cutie little crushes and the flirting was cute but then also it's about like these kids who are really like good at profiling and like seeing if you're lying that kind of stuff they're just like naturally gifted the naturals obviously and the fbi like recruit them in to help them solve cases cold cases because they're not supposed to be like in the they're minor so they're not supposed to be in the field you know of course obviously things go wrong there's secrets it's so good it's so captivating for like and it feels like criminal minds obviously that's like the thing that everyone says and it really does there's a little spencer character and spencer's my favorite i just i was obsessed with it i put these here as place markers so i wouldn't forget um obviously another video of me talking about fourth wing shocker who's shocked no one. Six star read. It was better the second time. I'm not even kidding. God, this book is so good. So good. I don't want to talk about Iron Flame yet because I will talk about it in another video. But this is just unbeatable to me. This is my favorite book I've ever read in my entire life. And reading it for the second time, this isn't my tabbed one. I was folding down pages. I was giggling. I was crying. I just... I, it, I just don't know if you haven't read it yet, why have you not? And if it's because it's like so high, I also don't want to read books that are super hyped up because it scares me, but this one is so worth it. It's so worth it. Even if you don't like fantasy, it's not really even, it doesn't even feel like fantasy. And the dragons make the story. God, the dragons are so funny and they're so cutie. I'm not going to talk about fourth thing the whole video. Don't worry. I'm done with it. Next, we had One Dark Window. I believe this was 2.75. If I'm wrong, I will put the correct thing up there. I went into this with such high hopes too. This is just like Once Upon a Broken Heart. I've only heard such good things about this video. Video. No. About this book. <laughs> I've heard such good things about this book and that if you love fourth wing you'll love this one it just fell short if this had been my first fantasy ever I would never have picked up another fantasy before because this book made me feel stupid and I was like why are we being so difficult like it's not even politics really like there's nothing really political and like there's a king yes just like the the idea of the cards okay if you don't know what this is about oh i'm not even gonna be able to explain it well because i'm still confused by this book there's a mist that took over a town i literally couldn't tell you the whole thing i can't 
there's a mist takes over the town it's growing like stronger over the years basically um and the way to get rid of the mist because there's like a king a, a dark king like a spirit that made the mist happen i think like in the woods and if you go into the mist you you get like all crazy and like you lose track of what you're doing and you basically die unless you have like a little charm with you like any type of charm i guess i don't really know <laughs> but if you go into the mist with the charm you're fine and you will be able to find your way out but if you go into the mist without it that's like how people are executed they get sent into the mist but there's also there was a fever a really long time ago and so a bunch of these people got infected but when you got infected you got magic powers also or if you got infected you were killed like they were like nope we don't want powers bye and so these people are like trying to hide their magic because obviously they don't want to get killed and it was like little kids that got infected so our main carol elspeth got infected when she was little her like magic is that when she touches a oh i haven't even talked about the cards there's providence cards it's like the 12 days of christmas there's like 12 of this card 11 of this card and so on and they all have different meanings they all have different powers there's like a truth telling one uh please stop they're, like you can get into the mind of one of them basically and if she touches it she absorbs it so she touched a card she absorbed the nightmare of course the scariest one and she has this beast growing in her it's disgusting but anyways part one is basically trying to explain that the entire time and there's so many parts to explain that you get lost i hate to say it, you get lost this was a book club book and everyone was confused if that helps but i will say immediately when we got into part two there was more romance there was more tension there it was so much better than part one so i definitely want to read the second one it was like a full 1.75 two star leading up into part two and then the second i got into part two it went up to a 2.75 so it was really good at the end and it was like higher stakes it just the the beginning was so much and I feel like if she condensed it and kind of tried to take out some parts, it would be more manageable. But anyways, One Dark Window, 2.75. Um, this one was my placeholder for Trick Shot, I believe. I have no words for this book as to why I picked it or wanted to read it. It was just a cutie little... Okay, it's not cutie at all. It's actually very inappropriate. It, no, it's cutie. The, the characters in it are cutie. It's a thruple story. She runs into one of the guys at the airport, ends up going home with him to his kind of boyfriend. They all have fun. That's about it. It was enjoyable. I think I, I'm gonna have to look up my rating. I think I gave it a three or 3.25. Cutie little Christmas smut book. Um, next, The Locked Door. I read this again, 24 hours. Like in two sittings, I just blew through this. Blew? Flew. <laughs> I didn't blow through anything. I flew through this book. I love Frieda McFadden, love all of her books. I have no complaints about her books. I, I thought I was missing a book that was last month. I just didn't do an October wrap up. Like I read The Coworker last month and it was really good. It was just like a very, like a slightly above average thriller. This one, I would say the same. I rated it a 3.75. I read it so quickly, I don't remember what it was about. That's my problem was when I blow, th blow. Why do I keep saying blow? When I, <laughs> when I fly through books, I like can't really remember them that well. Okay, she's a, <coughs> she's a surgeon. Her dad was a serial killer. Two of her patients are then found murdered. And so the detective's like, did you do this? And she's like, no, I promise. But then she says weird things throughout the book. Like Frida throws in weird comments from her that you're like, oh, so she is involved. Because it also, it goes back and forth between her childhood with her serial killer father, father who like, I don't want to give anything away but like she's obviously introduced to like the serial killer stuff and you go through like her feelings with killing people and you're like oh so she's a psycho and who's now a surgeon cutting into people and it like is kind of giving she cuts into people to get that part of her life like under control so she can like let that part loose so she's definitely 100 percent psychotic there's boy characters in here that i like like they're funny they're silly they're cute there's just some parts that like don't fully make sense like in the end there's one part i'm still confused about that i don't she like threw in a really ominous piece of dialogue like in her head that just doesn't make sense to me right now but twists and turns classic frida not as good as the housemaid but like better than some of her other ones 3.75 <laughs> Oh my god, I'm so excited to be able to say this. Oh my god. It has been since October 4th. I started this book October 4th. Guess what? Five star read. You may think that I wasn't liking it because it took me so long. No, I was never not enjoying this book. I just was reading so many other books at the same time. I was like, it's fine. I'll get to Aqua War. But 
Oh my god, the end of this book? Are you kidding me? I was sobbing, audibly choking. I was like, I'm not gonna, don't worry, I'm not gonna spoil anything. When the main thing happens at the end, if you've read it, you know what I'm talking about. The main big thing happens at the end. I was like, literally there's no way because I would have for some reason seen this as a spoiler. I just, I was so unwell. I was, I was <laughs> reading in Charlotte in my sister's apartment and I was trying to like be quiet because I was crying so hard. And I was like, she's gonna think I'm a, Psycho. I, I hate to say it, I like it better than Akamov. I really do. I think the plot line in Wings and Ruin is better than the plot line in Mist and Fury. The romance in Mist and Fury is better. It's just not romance heavy. Like, yes, obviously the couple is coupling in this book. It's not as focused in this book, which I didn't mind at all. I thought I was gonna mind, but I didn't. And I liked seeing more of the other characters also, like watching her sisters. I'm still pissed at her sisters. But just like the whole, the whole end, God, the war. I just, it was so good. I would trust Sarah J. Moss, Mass. I would trust her with my life. I'm not even kidding. Whatever she writes, I haven't even read Throne of Glass or Crescent City yet, but whatever she writes, I'm gonna love. I just know it. This was so incredible. 700 pages, never bored once. Five star read, amazing. So of course I had to quickly read Frost and Starlight. I read it in like a day. This was so cutie, this was needed. I don't know why people are saying like, oh, I skipped Frost and Starlight or like, you don't need to read it. Please read it. This is so good. I think I rated it like a 4.25 just because it's so teeny tiny. Like I, there's not a whole lot of substance in it. And you get to see, oh, there's a bookmark in it. Hey girl. You get to see other point of views. It's just, it was so fun. Stinky. Stinky's about to go tackle mugs. It made me cry at the end. I thought I'd figure out the twist, but it, or not the twist. There's not a twist in this. At the very end, I thought I'd figure out what was going to happen and I didn't. She shocked me and I was crying. The end of this book was so cutie sweetie. God, it was so good. All right, my last placeholder. Oh, I read Does It Hurt? I just finished Does It Hurt by H.C. Carlton. I think I gave it a 3.75. Hey girl wasn't anywhere near haunting and hunting no she even says on the book in her goodreads she was worried people were gonna it was she wrote it directly after them and so she knew people were gonna compare the two so i tried to go in with an open mind not think about zayd and I apparently can't remember her name. Anyways, girl who's like been running from the cops her whole life, basically. You find out why and what she did. And she's very strong. She's a good female main character. She's also silly. She's like funny. She made me laugh a couple times. So she is on the run. All she does is steal people's identity so she can just keep going on the run. So she meets this guy. They hook up. He's super hot, obviously. And steals his identity, identity, and leaves. And so he finds out, he figures it out like the next morning when she leaves and runs into her on the beach and pretends that he doesn't know. She doesn't know that he knows. She already opened up her credit card. So he knows about it. And so he's like, hey, you wanna come on my boat? <laughs> <laughs> so then they have silly boat time and he involves sharks because he's like a shark guy. He's a re shark researcher and he's just so silly. He's very aggressive and was very, it's very grumpy sunshine. I hope you can see her cleaning her toes right in front of me. So after this happens, he tries to like get his revenge. She's all mad at her. And then all of a sudden he turns around and storm's coming in and literally shipwrecks them. And they like flip the boat. They wash up on the shore of a lighthouse and it's manned by this old ass man with a peg leg. And he lets them stay there, but he's like, but you have to stay in your room. Um, curfew's at seven or nine or something like that. And they're like, mm, okay. He literally locks him in their room. So it's just, he's very weird. He has very strict rules. There's tension with them. It's a one bed trope. Thank God, <laughs> it's a forced proximity. It's, is it like the best piece of writing? No, like the plot line's like, eh. But there's definitely, there's some twists and the thing is like kind of haunted. They can hear like ghosts with like chains around them. It's very spooky, but not like scary spooky. It's not like a scary book. Is it worth the read? Sure for like a background read. Like I was reading it behind, like as I was reading three other books, like it was just like background noise basically. Um, but still very fun and it had a fun ending. So that's my November wrap up. 
it was a pretty decent month i'm not gonna lie i'm so proud with the amount of books i've read especially because i've been struggling to get more than like four or five but i will say finishing aqua war if you've seen all my videos i have literally been in the middle of aqua war for all of my videos basically i don't have a quarter silver flames yet i was actually supposed to go get that today because amazon's not gonna get it to me quick enough i'll start a quarter silver flames soon i don't really have a tbr for the next month because i have so many so many book club books and i want to read a quarter silver flames and I gotta finish Iron Flame and I'm not gonna put any pressure on myself for getting through a bunch of books because I did this week this month this year because I did this month I'm probably gonna start like a silly little book on my Kindle that I can read before bed <coughs> <coughs> okay I also when I have a bunch of time off I'm gonna do like a finishing a series finishing all the series in the middle of video so I'll also have all those to do so we'll see I don't know but thanks for coming thanks for watching me talk about the books I read this month that's all, folks. Bye.